EVgo has more than 850 DC fast charging stations in the United States. The company is led by Kathy Zoy, who has served as EVgo's CEO since 2017. She came to the company with experience in the clean energy, investing, and policy communities, and has a master's degree in engineering. EVgo is the owner and operator of their stations, and they earn their revenue from the sale of electricity. Their stations are compatible with all models of electric vehicles. Most of their stations are equipped with the CCS combo connector and a CHAdeMO connector, and some even have a Tesla connector, so anybody can use EVgo's stations. EVgo doesn't have a lot of variety though in its charging station models. Most of their network is made up of DC fast charging stations, but they do have some level 2 chargers, but those make up a very small part of their network. EVgo's focus is really on trying to build fast charging stations for long distance travel. In July last year, EVgo also acquired Recargo, the parent company of PlugShare. They provide a charging station map displaying stations across all of the major networks. Users are able to leave comments on their experience at a charging station for other users to see. But back to EVgo itself, they only have two DC fast charging station models. One of them is a 100 kilowatt model, and the other is a 350 kilowatt model. 350 kilowatts is pretty much the fastest charging speed out there right now, but there are some other companies offering these speeds as well. Right now, Electrify America has some 350 kilowatt stations on its network, and soon Tesla will be offering these speeds as well once they start building out their version 4 supercharging stations. Electrify America and Tesla are EVgo's most significant direct competitors at the moment, and Tesla will become even more significant competition for EVgo once some of their stations have the CCS combo connectors, opening up their supercharging network to non-Tesla EVs. Being the owner and operator of their stations means that EVgo needs to pay for all of the expenses that come with charging stations. And since most of their stations are DC fast charging stations, they're more expensive to build than lower speed level 2 charging stations. Luckily, because of those faster charging speeds, people needing to charge during a road trip who don't want to wait hours charging at a level 2 station are almost always willing to pay more for DC fast charging. This enables EVgo to receive relatively large margins on the electricity they sell. In quarter two this year, EVgo posted revenues of $9.1 million and cost of revenues of $5.7 million. This gave EVgo a 37% margin on their revenues, but subtracting the depreciation and amortization of their charging equipment related property and equipment, EVgo came out with a gross loss of $744,000 in quarter two. EVgo's general and administrative expense was $32.2 million, and the depreciation, amortization, and accretion of their non-charging related property, plant, and equipment came out to be $4.1 million. Subtracting those operating expenses gave EVgo an operating loss of $37 million in quarter two. Their other income category totaled $54 million, mostly driven by a $49 million gain from a decline in stock warrant liabilities. So EVgo's net income ended up at $17 million in quarter two, but of course the only reason they didn't have a net loss was that their stock warrants fell in value. EVgo has a fairly good balance sheet at this time. They have current assets of $390 million. Adding on their long-term assets totals $740 million of total assets. Further down, we see that they've got $180 million of total liabilities, which gives EVgo a nice book value of $560 million, which is a lot better than some other charging companies, but there's still a good amount of risk involved here. EVgo's success will depend on how fast they can grow their revenues and on how well they can manage their expenses. That $390 million of current assets might seem like quite a lot, but it won't last for too long with where their current operating losses are at right now. Just quarter over quarter, EVgo's current assets fell by $67 million. It's going to be a while until they start posting income from operations, so they'll probably be needing to raise more money over the next few years to continue operating. Looking at EVgo's stock, we see that it's trading at $8.77 per share at a $2.3 billion valuation. With this valuation and their trailing 12-month sales, EVgo has a price-to-sales ratio of 77, and using their valuation and book value, we see that they have a price to book ratio of 4.1. Make sure to check out my video on the 5 best EV charging stocks to buy this year, and I'll see you in the next video.